This was two years ago, I'm standing in my kitchen and my body's tense. I'm constantly looking back and forth between the freezer and the door. The freezer and the door, I'm checking to make sure that nobody's coming in. The reason being, I'm doing something I shouldn't and if I get caught, just like last time, I mean I've got Asian parents so you can imagine, I'm probably gonna get my ass beat. And I would leave now but I've only been here for about 10 minutes so it probably isn't done yet and then suddenly I hear the floorboard upstairs creak. And then I hear a thud upstairs and then another and then another and I can tell it's my mum coming down the stairs. So I run towards the freezer kind of like on my tiptoes so that no one can hear me. I swing open the freezer's door and then I take out my laptop. I turn back around towards the door. My laptop's in my hand and I'm looking at my mum staring at me. She caught me again and I thought she would shout at me just like last time but honestly this time I think it's happened so many times that she just looked disappointed. She's already told me not to put my laptop in the freezer the reason being the heat from the laptop is gonna break the freezer you know it's cold it's like electronic it's like it's gonna fuck up the freezer basically but I didn't have any choice. The reason being this was two years ago and I was in a point where I was getting consistent client work but I couldn't yet afford a proper PC so I was still working on the laptop that my dad bought me for school and whenever I finished a video usually when I'm rendering it it ends up overheating and crashing and the only solution that I could find was to leave it in the freezer while it rendered. My laptop was so shit I had to leave it in the freezer in order for me to render a video. I look back at that and I laugh I'm thinking like oh that's so silly and so stupid you might be thinking like oh that's kind of weird but that was what I had to do in order for me to continue my editing career. Editing was something that I genuinely loved. I started with editing my own Fortnite videos on my own channel on my PS4 because I didn't even have this laptop and then when my dad got this laptop for me it wasn't the best but I still really wanted to try it out. I would see all these other YouTubers making such crazy videos crazy edits so when my dad bought me this laptop it was a ryzen 5 4500u if you know all the pc specs and stuff so it wasn't like the best laptop it didn't have a gpu or anything it could barely run premiere but that was all i needed in order for me to start editing properly and i would edit every single day going through this process so editing on my laptop in my room going downstairs putting it in the freezer taking it back out sending the video i would go through that every single day that was just enough for me to buy my first pc i remember it was an hp omen 25l it was for 1000 pounds so about 1.2k usd i paid for 800 pounds off it and then my dad gave me 200 because he saw how hard I was working and now fast forward to today and I've genuinely got my dream set up around me. I would look at all of those Pinterest posts, those YouTube like setup tours, those top 10 teenager to setups and it'd be like some crazy like 10, 15k setup and I would always look at it and honestly I was so jealous. The reason being and this isn't to be like some weird pity thing but my family we're not like we're not poor don't get me wrong but we're not exactly like fucking rich as fuck or like if I want something I just get it so I've always been asking my dad for a PC and he was never able to get it and I don't blame him at all for it it's like naturally with like the state of like finances and everything but I would always be so jealous looking at those videos and I think that light switch moment the moment that I realized like oh shit I've actually kind of done it now was I was looking through my old camera roll I'm looking through the progression of my setup and it starts with like some shitty white TV it was it wasn't even a monitor, it was a TV connected to my PS4, then my old laptop, and the laptop my dad got me, and then my first PC. And I'm looking at it progress and progress. And by the end of it, there's one picture where I remember it was an orange setup, so I had the orange light and stuff on. And next to it, there was a Pinterest post. This Pinterest post was the one that I was looking at years ago when I didn't even have a laptop, when I was on my PS4 editing videos. And that was the picture that I used to look up to, and I was honestly jealous of. And I'm looking at these pictures next to each other, the Pinterest post and my setup, and I genuinely could barely tell the difference. And I know there's a lot of editors that are in a similar position to me where you want to edit but then your PC is kind of holding you back. You know you have potential but you feel as though if you had a better PC you could have gotten there already. So I wanted to make this video kind of to you because honestly it's something fucking plain at your head. That feeling that you know you could do more, you have greater potential but your circumstances don't allow for it. That genuinely just like fucks you up mentally. I'm gonna give you like tactics and actionable steps and stuff right now but I just hope me explaining my situation kind of gives you like almost like hope not in like a cringe way but showing that I've done it and there's hundreds and thousands of other editors that have gone through the same journey as you and having that feeling that you can still go to where you want to go despite the cards that you've been dealt. So the way I'm gonna go about this video I'm not gonna just tell you like oh get the best PC get this get that it's like I would tell you the best CPU to get the best GPU to get but none of it would matter because even if I told you let's be honest you wouldn't be watching this if you could afford it anyways and that's not like me shitting on you but it's me like saying from experience when I would watch these videos is like oh buy this laptop for editing buy this cpu oh cpu benchmarks it's like okay that's nice but i'm fucking broke i can't afford to spend 1k on a gpu right now so i'm going to tell you more of the framework rather than like the direct thing that you need to buy so frameworks being kind of like what you can do with your exact situation right now so it's applicable it's all relative to where you are now so the first thing i want you to do is optimize the performance with the pc you've already got the reason being these are like no cost 
ways in order for you to get like 5, 10, 15, 20% performance boost. And you can imagine that if you're editing every single day, even being like 2% faster, that really adds up. So of course, make sure you're doing all the basic stuff. So things like lowering your playback resolution, making proxies, closing out of other apps. So don't have like Discord open if your PC is genuinely fucked up. Like you've got to sacrifice somewhere. Then go into your taskbar, make sure not too much stuff is open, of course. But other than that, I think the largest difference in performance that I've found, it's going to cost you a little bit, but just hear me out. For the increases in performance you're going to get, I promise this is worth it. It's the storage system that you have in place. So I won't take too long explaining this, but I just give you like the actionable step you need to take. So you want to have your software and your operating system all on one drive and then on a different drive like a completely different drive you're gonna have your project files and your media and i don't remember the exact numbers but i think it was something as like ridiculous as like 40 percent increase in performance in terms of like read and write speeds and all of that because you can imagine like if premiere is calling not only the software and like the files from the software but your project file and also media all from the same drive you can imagine that's probably gonna tank performance so if you're only working on one drive and god forbid if you're on a hard drive right now make that switch to ssd or nvme or whatever the faster drives as quickly as possible i know this is me telling you like oh you need to spend some money but bro if you're expecting to make thousands and thousands ahead of your career you spending 50 to 100 bucks on a decent drive isn't gonna fucking kill you but by you trying to save money here and there saying oh i can't spend this money on a drive i can't spend this money on making my premiere perform better honestly if that's not an easy ROI for you if you don't have the brain to think that's worth it maybe editing isn't for you so like the best, best case scenario, you have three drives, right? You've got your OS and applications, so your Premiere Pro and your Windows and stuff. And then on a the second drive, you have your project files and your media. So the actual clips and as well as the project files. And on the third drive, you have your media cache. That's what's going to get you the best performance. But if you do only want to work with two drives, do that OS and software, media and project files. And then cache on that drive as well. And generally what this point leads to, is leads onto it perfectly. You want to be making these quick upgrades with huge ROI as quickly as possible. Because for that dumbass kid, he's He's probably still on a fucking single hard drive running everything off and he's wondering why is everything loading so slow it keeps like stuttering and shit and then he's asking me oh which gpu should i get bro fix the quick upgrades first you spending 2000 on a gpu is gonna have less of a performance increase than you spending 50 to 100 bucks on a storage drive some of these other quick fixes that i want you to make it's things that essentially release the constraint on your pc there's this thing called theory of constraints it applies to anything that you're doing in your life right your business your um, gym progress your work with your pc there's always going to be one component Component, which is holding back the performance of your PC because essentially what the theory of constraint is is that a system will grow or a system will perform until it meets a constraint and once that constraint is removed it will grow until it meets the next constraint usually your constraint isn't the CPU or GPU straight away it's something like storage or it's RAM for me my old PC it was my RAM so what does this look like in practice you find out what's the one thing that's stopping your PC from performing any further while you're editing have your task manager up you don't need to do this all the time but do it for a few sessions and just figure out what keeps reaching a hundred percent if your ram keeps hitting like high 90s a hundred percent every single time you're editing you probably know what your constraint is your money would be best spent buying a new set of ram and the same way let's say while you are working you hear your fans fucking revving up and every time your fans rev up your premiere slows down your pc is probably overheating and that is a constraint and the way we remove that constraint is by buying more fans and just like we said before if files are loading really slowly the constraint is probably the storage speed therefore we should probably buy more storage you want to be identifying these quick fixes as soon as possible the reason being they have crazy high value because they're releasing a huge constraint and they're also relatively low cost to you buying a new pc because a lot of editors don't understand this but by you buying a better pc you realize that won't make you any better at editing because if your animations are kind of choppy or you don't know how to use this effect or you don't know how to do sound design you buying a better pc won't make you better all that's going to happen is that you are now the same shit editor you were you're just shit faster and of course your CPU and your GPU are incredibly important for your PC's performance but there's no point spending like the hundreds of dollars you're going to spend on a CPU if you're getting like a tiny increase. If you are going to upgrade your CPU and GPU just buy an entire new PC. Wait until you've made the money like focus on the skills you already have. Just because you have a bad PC doesn't mean you can't make money. Will it be harder? Yes but you can't do anything about it so you might as well play the game. So just keep working on whatever you have now and when you have a decent stash of money which like I'm showing you how to make money and shit on my other videos and stuff so you continuing to go onto your editing part and your editing journey and saving that money and then reinvesting it back into business for a good PC that is how you want to do it 
I was working on a laptop that was a couple hundred bucks and I made that 1k from it and that's when I bought an entire 1k PC with it. And I worked on that 1k PC and naturally more constraints came up. Oh, it was overheating, the RAM, the storage. I would make these upgrades never once did I change the CPU and GPU. I just kept doing client work and client work on that PC and then when I had the money, when I had a stash of money saved up and I was like, you know what, I want to get a new PC. I bought this PC I have now and it was like 2, 3, 4k, I don't remember how much it was. If you're in a situation right now where you can't spend thousands on a PC, you have two options in front of you. Either you make the money and you upgrade your PC or you keep complaining, which honestly doesn't serve you in any way. Whether you complain or not, the PC doesn't change. Your financial situation will not get better by you complaining. All that happens when you complain is that you implant these shitty limiting beliefs within your head, telling yourself that you cannot make it. Just think about what that does to your mental, to your head when you're working. If you continuously tell yourself, oh, my PC is too bad. Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I can't work because my family's from this place and I'm like, we're poor and some shit. By you telling yourself that thing, you essentially like, not in like a weird, like fucking white girl, like manifestation type shit, but you turn it into a reality. You can imagine like the 13, 14, 15 year old kid that keeps telling himself like, oh, I'm so like antisocial. I'm so socially awkward. I have like social anxiety. He keeps telling himself these things and then he continues to act in a way that aligns with those words. So he goes out and he is socially awkward. He doesn't speak to anyone. He's awkward. And as time passes, the more he tells himself that, the more he acts it out in public. So it becomes this vicious feedback loop where he tells himself something, he does the actions or he has situations that come up that support this idea and then that strengthens his belief further and then now he continues to act in a way that aligns with that identity. By you telling yourself, oh my PC is not good enough for editing, oh I wish I was born into a rich family or some shit, I used to say that shit bro. That's actually fucked. When I would ask my dad for a PC and he was like, oh, we'll get it, we'll get it. But he couldn't get it, like not because it's his fault, but he couldn't afford it. And I would genuinely tell myself, I wish I was born into a rich family because we would have been able to buy a PC. I didn't want the PC for like editing or anything. I just wanted to play Fortnite, but yeah, man, like honestly, I'm so grateful for the fact that I couldn't afford a PC back then. Genuinely, like I probably wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't. Just let's think about it, right? So the reason I got here, I would say it's because maybe luck's involved, but I worked pretty hard for it, I would say. For the last three, four years, all I've been doing pretty much every day, I've been doing something related to work. And that's not in like a weird grind set type of way, but genuinely, like there's days I love it, there's days I don't, but I'll work regardless. But I don't think I would have had like the need to work or like the drive or the motivation if I was able to get a PC straight away. Like you see those studies of those like rich children who are born to like millions, like generational worth type shit. And they are the ones that essentially like, go on with their life, don't have to work a single day in their life. Even like their hobbies, they don't have a reason to excel in a hobby. And those are the guys that they grow up and they're like the drug addict. You hear the millionaire's kid who gets into coke, a millionaire's kid that gets depression and like kills himself. The reason being, they have no reason to work. So yeah, you could look at your situation right now. You can say, I can't get a better PC for X, Y, Z reasons. But first of all, you can't change the cards you were dealt on. Second of all, I think it's such a beautiful thing to be able to tell your story that like, you look back at your soul when you have actually made it, when you put in the work and the money's coming in and it's like, you're happy with your work, you're happy with your life. You, you've got all these things. You've developed yourself as a person through entrepreneurship. You look back at it and you're thinking, I had a story to tell. It's not like I was born into this. I think framing it in that way, knowing that what you're going through right now, every single struggle you have is simply a story that older you is going to tell. I look back at those days when I put my laptop in the freezer and it was horrible at the time, but I look back at it and I think this is a story I'm able to tell. I worked hard and I'm where I am today despite the hardships that I faced. This is kind of fucked. This is like not even about editing anymore, but I remember when I was speaking to one of my friends in first year college and it was a bit of a deeper conversation and we were talking about like suicide and like depression and shit because I think everyone goes through it. No one talks about it and this isn't me saying that depression isn't real, but the way you approach it and the way you deal with it is what I think defines your character. And I was talking to him about, I think it was in like year 10 year 11 so when i was about 15 years old i was genuinely at the shittest point in my life and it's not like this isn't me asking for pity or like asking for anything in fact i think i'm gonna say it only because i hope there's at least one person like maybe you're watching this now and it's like you could maybe relate or i mean i'd fucking hope not because the way i was feeling when i was in like that year 10 year 11 age genuinely i wouldn't wish it on anyone i would walk down like there's a dual carriage way which is it's like a highway and it was like a very thin path on the side i would get into like an argument with my parents i'd feel like everything's just going to shit like my studies my my i'm not making money like all this shit is st stacking up i'd leave the house i would walk down that like highway so like that thin pavement and like i just fucking cry and it's like i'd have like these like fucking intrusive words of like i'm just gonna walk into it like this fucking car is going at like 70 miles per hour i'm like okay fuck it i'm gonna walk i'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in front of it of course there were so many things that added up to that but i was talking to my friend about this and i was saying like that moment in my life even to this day i'll say it, the lowest point i've been in in my life and the more i was speaking about it the more i realized that i'm so 
glad it happened in a weird way like i'm glad i genuinely was depressed as fuck and i wanted to kill myself the reason being now i look back at that and i think if i've come out of that and i've achieved what i have and i've become the person i am today and i've gone through that if i can survive that i can go through fucking anything if I wake up a little sad and I'm thinking like, oh, everything's going to shit. I just think like, okay, when you were like 15 years old, you went through the lowest point in your life. Is it worse than that? No, you survived that, you can survive this. What that really showed me was every single negative experience that you're going through now is simply older you's story to tell. And I don't know, just seeing it in that way really helped me. And I think for you talking about like, oh, my PC is not good enough for all of that. I think it would really benefit you to see it in that way. Because think about the situation you're in now. So I'm not getting clients. My PC is not good enough. I can't edit in this way. If you were able to edit like that already, if you literally like fucking came out of the fetus, you were born with all the skills you needed, it probably wouldn't be as satisfying for you to like start making money from editing, for you to start making yourself known in the community, for you to actually become known as like a top 1% editor. It wouldn't be anywhere near as meaningful if you were literally able Able to have it handed to you and this isn't me telling you like oh you should stay in the situation you're in. you should definitely strive for better but just if you take a moment now, right now like visualize yourself where you would want to be in six to twelve months you're working with the clients you want you're making the money you want you're working from home you don't need to go university anymore all of these amazing things that you're striving for you would probably tell yourself that oh i'd love it if i had all those things now but you working today is what will get you there in six to 12 months or however long your goals are so i'm 18 now and i look back at 15 16 17 18 years old me and he was the kid that would stay up all night in order to edit a video he was a kid of course he had friends and stuff but sometimes he would have to tell them like yo bro i'm sorry i've got a video to edit i'm so fucking glad that instead of watching like stupid ass content he was the one who would watch like fucking editing tutorials he would be watching things like this in his spare time not even because they were interesting or fun i don't think he knew it at the time but the reason i'm where i am today is only because that younger version of me decided to work and you right now when you're staying up late editing when you're watching videos like these just to learn when you're being a part of our community in order to learn from each other you are that younger version of yourself that older you is gonna look at and either say bro i'm so fucking glad like i'm making like 8 9 10 11 12 k a month right now and it's only because of you he's gonna be the one that's saying oh i've grown as, so much as a person because i've learned how to work productively and i've learned how to balance with my health and everything he's gonna look at you and be like god damn thank you I promise you, all those goals you have, not those like pussy ones where you kind of like cope and say, oh, I want to make editing a side thing. This is another topic, but so many editors say they want to keep editing on the side. But if we were honest to yourself, if you're saying this right now, I'm talking to you now. If you were honest with yourself, are you saying that you want to keep editing as a side thing because you actually want to keep it as a side thing? Or are you just scared that you're not going to make it? Are you scared of the work it's going to take? Are you scared, oh, at least I have a backup option? Are you saying that you're keeping it as a side thing because you're scared you're never going to be able to make it? After this video, I genuinely recommend just taking a moment to think about it. Because if we're being honest, when you started out, maybe you started out as a hobby and at one point in your career, you saw other people doing great things and you wanted something very similar. You had big goals. You had huge ambitions of the money you want to make, the people you want to work with, the way you want to live your life. And if you are saying right now that you want to keep it on the side, honestly, I think it's because you kind of bitched out on your goals. Not me calling you a bitch, but I'm saying like, if you are ambitious, which if you set those goals, you're probably ambitious. If you're watching videos like these in your spare time, you probably do have bigger goals. And it's natural that that we have moments where we kind of doubt ourselves if you're telling yourself right now oh i just want to keep editing as a side thing as a hobby if you want to keep it as a hobby and you genuinely don't want to make any money from it fair enough you do you but if you have the goal to even make it as a side income if you want to make money at all why not make a shit ton from it you're going to be playing the game anyways you might as well win the game this exact journey that you're going on i promise you i've gone through it in the last few years my first ever client video was for two dollars fifty well it was for five dollars but i got scammed for half of it my first video i got paid less than a happy meal and now i'm working with the largest creators in the world 20 30 million subscribers getting paid a grand a one and a half grand for a single video that takes me a week to do i'm genuinely working on things that i'm fulfilled by that i'm working from home saying that i make more than but i could have even imagined and i promise you you have the exact same potential i'm not special i'm some random brown kid i'm still in my bedroom bro i still live in my parents house i'm some random brown kid that managed to make it in the editing space if you're still listening to this it means you actually have extremely similar ambitions and it's i've made it my mission to help you so if you are interested in that my entire channel is made for you go scroll down right now click the red subscribe button and then you can go watch this video here peace